What's up gamers and collectors, DGC back with another video and today we're going to talk about the JFJ Easy Pro and is this thing actually worth purchasing? Let's find out. <laughs> Alright guys, so the JFJ Easy Pro Resurfacer. Is this thing worth adding to your game collection for your game collecting needs? So right off the bat, what does it come with? How does it come shipped? comes in a nice brown cardboard box, kind of boring. However, it comes packaged very well, nice thick cardboard or uh, styrofoam on top. Uh, it comes with, I was kind of surprised about this, a very nice set of uh, instructions here. It is actually laminated paper and it shows you really in-depth pictures and which which of the products you should should and shouldn't be using which is kind of nice um, needless to say I'm just gonna go ahead and say right off the bat I'm actually thoroughly impressed with this product I'm just go ahead and say that right off the bat at the beginning of the video uh, it also comes with a very harder coarser white pad uh, and then a yellow uh, f softer um, you know easier pad easier on the discs for more of a uh, finer polish uh, and then that comes with two corresponding um, polishing compounds so the white goes with the yellow and the blue goes with the white pad and then it comes with a little bottle of antiseptic spray cleaner in the little spritzy bottle and then it comes with uh, some surprisingly 3M um, sandpaper and then it comes with two of these uh, discs to stick the sandpaper onto. Um, I did use the sandpaper once, didn't really like the results personally. Uh, what else does it come with? It comes with a single microfiber pad or uh, rag, and then that's uh, that's pretty much it. As far as the unit itself goes, it's built very well. I like the unit. Um, the only complaint that I have of the actual unit that to me could make for a nicer unit would be if it had some like storage slots on the side to like uh, I guess put the pads on one side kind of like a little slot and then like another little slot to store the compounds and that kind of stuff I feel like that would just make it more of a compact unit and then you could store everything nicely and together that would be one thing I could recommend if they ever make a follow-up unit to add some little pockets on the side essentially but other than that the unit's great um, I go I went ahead and resurfaced a bunch of discs because if you watch the channel uh, I had recently said that I'm going to keep continuing with the complete Dreamcast set which I kinda gave up on for a little while but now I'm kinda like reinvigorated to get these Dreamcast games and I've been playing hella Dreamcast and so now I'm just like loving some Dreamcast again so uh, enthusiastically wanting to play Dreamcast stuff um, Last week, I just happened to be looking online. I was like, you know what? What does one of these uh, disc cleaners cost? And uh, I was looking at the, uh, I think they call it the ELM, which is the super expensive $5,500 one. And I was like, I like my games, but not for the price of a used car do I like my games. Um, so I bought the $200 JFJ Easy, and I was hoping this thing was going to be a great little product. And it is. Um, so... In typical DGC fashion, I put my money where my mouth is, and I decided to try out some heavy hitter games here. Got Dynamite Cop, I threw that in there, came out great. Sonic Adventure 2, my god, did this get expensive, this is a $120 game now, I had no idea. Happened to look it up just out of curiosity. Uh, we got Co Veronica, it's a dual disc game, came out flawless. Um, and we got Seaman here, not as expensive, but still like a $70 title, so some expensive games there, I decided... They were already bad, why not toss them in and see what happens? Uh, I got some other random stuff here. Toy Commander, Virtual Fighter 3rd, Trick Style, Tony Hawk 2, some soccer shit, Sega Rally, uh, Army Man, and then Rippin' Riders, and then w WWF Attitude. So all those games came out great. I'm thoroughly impressed with how well they came out. Then the stack that didn't come out well got some crappy racing games, Decent racing game, but didn't come out too well. Crazy Taxi, obviously a great game. Mortal Kombat Gold, didn't come out too well. And then Hydra Thunder, probably my favorite Dreamcast game, did not come out too well. So those will probably be leaving the collection. Uh, unfortunately, it might go straight in the trash because they're just not great. Um, I haven't figured that out yet. 
But uh, what else we got here? As far as cleaning the system goes, you're definitely going to want to get you some nice rags um, and clean it out every time you use it just because some of you people out there, I was watching some videos, have some nasty ass machines. All I'm saying, clean this machine out. Take care of it and it'll take care of you. Uh, what else we got? Here's something I'm curious about and for anybody that has one of these, be sure to comment. So, let me go ahead and grab a nice little GameCube game here as a demonstration. Uh, Sonic Adventure DX. So with a normal DVD, obviously you can see that that goes to about right there. With a GameCube game, it's only going to go to about right there. So you'd almost have to have separate discs specifically for GameCube games so that it wears down like that. Versus if you had a DVD one, it would wear down there and here, if you depending on like where you're using it. So let's say you do a bunch of these, it would wear down here. And then you want to do a normal disc, then you wouldn't have it here. So then you wouldn't be able, like it wouldn't get the inner part of the DVD or CD if you did a bunch of GameCube games. So just a thought for you in the future if I, I would almost either get two discs or hold off to do your GameCube discs until after you've done all your CDs, DVDs. Um, just a thought that I had there. So I'm probably going to hold off on doing Dreamcast stuff or GameCube stuff for a little while um, just for that exact reason. Uh, I made a nice little list here. It does say on the box that it's Blu-ray ready. So the only real games that came Blu-ray would be, I guess, the current systems, last systems, uh, Wii U, and PS3. Uh, personally, I've never seen a Blu-ray disc, or I guess Blu-ray movies for that matter too. I've never seen a, a, a Blu-ray style disc get bad enough to where it needs to be disc resurfaced. So I don't know why it even claims that. And then I've also always been told that if you scrape off the layer of the, like, the very, you know when you touch a Blu-ray, it's just super slick and, and smooth. If you scrape that layer off, I've always been told that that Blu-ray will no longer work. And that's kind of like part of the technology of the Blu-ray laser and this and that. I don't know how all that works. I'm not an engineer. But that's what I've always been told. So to be honest with you, even though it says it's capable of doing Blu-rays and stuff, I don't think I'd ever put one in there. And again, I've never actually seen a Blu-ray that doesn't work. Just from the technology of how they're created, I think that they're actually pretty well, not indestructible, but you really have to be screwing with a Blu-ray to try to actually mess it up. Um, as far as like, would I put a Saturn game in there? I don't know. That's old, uh, even a Sega CD game. Those are old enough to where like, it might be too risky just because of how old and, and brittle that is just due to age. I mean, a Dreamcast game alone is from anywhere from 99 to 2001. So, I mean, they're also 20 plus years old. But, I mean, Sega CD, you're talking 30 years old, some of those games. I mean, that's, that's, an, that's an old disc at that point. That's really old plastic. So, like, you almost have to really consider, do you put something that old into the machine to try it? Uh, I guess if the game's already screwed up enough, why not? But at the same time, I don't know that that's worth the risk. Um, so, you know, 360, Xbox, PS1 even is, is getting pretty old at this point too. So, like, that's a, almost a personal endeavor you have to question if you want to do. But uh, for me, I don't know. Something that old, it might not be worth it. But for Dreamcast and probably the OG Xbox and GameCube, I think it's probably fine to use it on those personally. I've seen some good enough results to where I'm happy with this system. Uh, what else we got on here? That's pretty much it. So, you know, just clean the system really well. Uh, probably wouldn't use Blu-rays on it. Uh, one other thing that I would like to, I guess, touch on, um, as far as this stuff goes, when you run out of these and these, as far as the compound goes, what I would do is I would just buy Meguiar Scratch X. You're going to get the exact same results out of it. It's going to be cheaper, and you can go buy it at pretty much any store. Targets, Walmarts, any auto parts store, and you'll be good to go. As far as getting new ones of these go, um, Harbor Freight is probably going to be your better bet as far as getting them cheap. Uh, and they're going to have a bigger selection of them, believe it or not, even at Harbor Freight. Whereas from these people, you only really have these two options, either super firm and hard and then soft. Uh, Harbor Freight's going to have um, orange, which would be slightly harder than this one, but not as hard as this. The yellow, they'll have it. And then the black, which is going to be the super soft one. So ideally, that's what you'd want to do. Orange, yellow, black. Uh, and then with the scratch X, Maguire Scratch X is, is, is how I would plan to do it. And at some point, eventually, once these burn out, 
for this one really. I'm not even going to use that ever again. It's just too hard to use on the disc and it leaves it leaves very undesirable perfections in a weird way. Like it'll smooth it out, but then it still leaves almost like micro burn marks onto the disc. So I wouldn't even use the white one, only use the yellow one. And then if you're going to get aftermarket pads, orange, yellow, black, don't ever go for anything real hard like that. If it's not squishy like this, I wouldn't even put it onto a game personally. Um, but yeah, the other thing you might run into an issue with is the hole. That it, ha it, it essentially has to have at least somewhat of a hole for it to sit on. Uh, it just kind of helps keep it in place. You might have to make one on the, the Harbor Freight ones, just jab a hole in there and, and then you're good to go. But other than that, you can resurf, uh, um, resupply this machine very cheaply at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight probably even, I think they might even have Scratch X. So you could literally go to one store and get all the supplies you need for like $10 probably. Um, but I, I would actually recommend the JFJ Easy Pro. It's definitely a fantastic little product. I'm thoroughly pleased with it. Let me, uh, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but let me, um, and again, I didn't get it before, but I'll show you the after of the Dynamite Cop. So Dynamite Cop there. Again, I don't know how well you'd be able to see that on the camera, but I am thoroughly impressed with how well that came out. I really am. Like, if you can't tell, I'm, I'm genuinely, like, happy that these came out so well. Same with this Sonic Adventure. This is my original copy that I got with my Dreamcast at the flea market way back 20 plus years ago. And uh, at 120 bucks, I'm glad this thing came out very well. I had no idea that this game got that expensive. I mean, it is arguably one of the best Dreamcast games uh, and best Sonic. It is the best Sonic game. I said it. Uh, the new one is really good, though. But um, And then Code Veronica came out very well. So yeah, definitely recommend this JFJ Easy Pro. It's definitely a good solid buy. I'll leave a uh, link in the description for it. Not an affiliate link, just a link. Um, so you can go ahead and purchase one if you'd like one. They're about 200 bucks. You might, at this point in time, you may want to wait until Christmas just to see if they have a little sale, which I bet you they might. So other than that, guys, peace out for now. Till next time. Come here, you mother... I'm gonna... <laughs> Right.